Today on From His Heart, Pastor Jeff Shreve concludes his timely series called Dreams and Detours, Lessons from the Life of Joseph, with a message of hope and encouragement to trust God even in the detours, so we can learn what life will be when dreams come true. Well, we've been in for the last several weeks, we've been in a series on the life of Joseph. And I hope you've enjoyed this series as much as I have. Joseph, what an incredible guy. A guy who experienced as a young man, 17 years old, tremendous dreams from the Lord. Dreams that one day his brothers would bow down to him. There were wonderful dreams for Joseph, not so good for his brothers. He didn't really like, they didn't really like uh, those dreams, his ten older brothers. But we know that Joseph's dreams met detours, major detours. One of them was when his brothers sold him as a slave. That's a major detour when you're 17 years old. And he went from uh, having this great dream being his daddy's favorite to all of a sudden his dad thinking he's dead and being sold as a slave and being taken hundreds of miles down to Egypt. And from Egypt, he's sold again into Potiphar's house. And from Potiphar's house, he's lied about by Potiphar's wife who claims that Joseph tried to rape her and he's put in prison. I mean, can things get any worse? Can this, can this guy not catch a break? God, you gave me a dream, but where is this dream? When is it coming to fruition? But as we've studied the, in the story, the Lord was with Joseph there in the prison and he interpreted a dream for uh, the butler of Pharaoh and he Asked that butler, he said, listen, when your dream comes to pass and Pharaoh reinstates you, can you remember me to Pharaoh? Please remember me. But the scripture says in Genesis 41, but the butler forgot him. And it was two more full years. He's waiting there in the prison. But then at the end of two full years, Pharaoh had a dream. And the butler remembered Joseph and told Pharaoh, hey, there's a man in your prison. And he knows how to interpret dreams. And Joseph went in one day, in one day he went from the prison to the palace. He, he woke up that morning in a stinking prison and he went to bed that night in satin sheets in the splendor of the palace as he interpreted Pharaoh's dream and Pharaoh elevated him to prime minister in Egypt, the number two man in all of Egypt. And God blessed him so. And we've talked about the fact that Joseph was able to forgive his brothers. He was able to forgive Potiphar's wife. He was able to forgive all those who hurt him. Now listen, some of you might be here and you have a dream. God gave you a dream, a word, uh, some kind of a promise from his word that went straight into your heart and you knew it was God speaking to you. But that hasn't come to pass in a long, long time and you've kind of lost your steam for a mate. You've kind of lost your steam for a miracle and for this dream to come to fruition. And you've done what many do in the boxing world. When it looks like you're just facing defeat, you throw in the towel and you say, I quit. I can't do this anymore. I quit. And some of you have quit on your dream that the Lord gave you. Listen, it's always too early to quit. And as we finish up Joseph's life, you're going to see that what God promised Joseph came to pass, even though it took 22 years. Genesis chapter 42. Here is the situation. Joseph has been elevated. He's prime minister in Egypt. He told Pharaoh, hey, here's this deal on your dream. He said there are going to be seven years of plenty in the land of Egypt, but they're going to be followed up by seven years of tremendous famine. So here is what we need to do. We need to, Pharaoh, you need to appoint a man who is wise and discerning and put him over uh, the situation so that he can store up enough grain to have it during the days of famine. And that's when Pharaoh said, there isn't anybody as wise and discerning as you, Joseph. I'm, I'm making you the prime minister. And so Joseph went to work, 
And in the seven years of famine, he st- uh, of plenty, he stored up so much grain that they couldn't count it all because he had so much. But then when the famine hit, the famine hit hard. And they're two years into the famine. And the famine doesn't just affect Egypt. It affects all the surrounding lands of Egypt. It affects into Canaan and really all the, the area known as the Fertile Crescent. And it says in Genesis chapter 42, Now J- Jacob, Joseph's daddy, the father of those 12 boys. Now Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, and Jacob said to his sons, Why are you staring at one another? And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy some for us from that place so that we may live and not die. Then 10 brothers of Joseph went down to buy grain from Egypt, the same 10 that sold Joseph into slavery. But, Joseph, uh, but Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he said, I'm afraid that harm may befall him. So the sons of Israel came to buy grain among those who were coming, for the famine was in the land of Canaan also. Now Joseph was the ruler over the land. He was the one who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. When Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them, but he disguised himself to them and spoke to them harshly and said to them, where have you come from? And they said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. But Joseph had recognized his brothers, although they did not recognize him. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he had about them. Joseph's dreams, Genesis 37. We were binding sheaves in the field. And all of a sudden, brothers, my sheaf rose up and your sheaves gathered around and bowed down. Oh, they hated that dream. Hey, brothers, I've had another dream. The sun, the moon, and the 11 stars were bowing down to me. Oh, they hated that dream. But God had given those dreams to Joseph, and now those dreams were coming to pass as his brothers bowed down before him, not knowing who he was. They thought Joseph was dead. Now, here's what I want you to see. When dreams come true, the fulfillment of Joseph's dreams teach us three wonderful foundational truths about God. Truth number one, God is faithful. God is faithful. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23 says this, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. God had given a dream, a promise, so to speak, to Joseph, and uh, it didn't look like the promise was going to come to fruition. I mean, it has been 22 years. He was sold in slavery at 17. He appeared before Pharaoh when he was 30. He was elevated to prime minister. And there's seven years of plenty. He's overseeing all the years of plenty. And now they're two years into the famine. He is 39 years old. He hasn't seen his family for 22 years. He doesn't know if his family is alive or dead. He definitely doesn't know if his dad is alive or dead. His dad is 130 years old. That's pretty old. I thought Larry was old, but man, Jacob's really old. And so he doesn't know if his dad's alive or dead. He doesn't know what the situation is with his brothers. But God had given him a dream. His brothers were going to bow down to him. And here it is, the fulfillment of a dream. Wow. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he had about them. He who promised is faithful. You know, one of the great promises, we sang this song today, Even So Come. One of the great promises in Scripture is the Lord says that He will come again and set up His kingdom on earth and rule and reign from Jerusalem. That's a promise that's given over and over and over and over again in Scripture. And when Jesus comes back, Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, John, the apostle, who was given the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, and I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat upon it, who is called faithful and true. 
He who promised is faithful. And when he comes again, he's called faithful and true because what he said he was going to do, he does it. You can trust in the promises of God. His promises always come to pass, always come to pass. 1 Kings 8, 56, when Solomon dedicated the temple, one of my favorite verses in the Old Testament, he was praying and blessing the Lord. He said, Blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel according to all that he promised. Not one word has failed of all his good promise, which he promised through Moses, his servant. Not one word has failed. Hey, has God given you a promise? And, and, and has it been a long time in coming? And have you just said, well, this isn't going to happen anymore? I mean, God gave me a promise that I was going to be a wife and a mom, and, and it, my biological clock is ticking, and I've been waiting and, and saving myself and waiting for Mr. Wright, but I don't see Mr. Wright. He's not on the radar screen, and I've kind of dropped my standards and just gone for Mr. OK, and uh, I don't even see Mr. OK, and I, I'm just kind of looking for Mr. Is he breathing? And uh, so... You know, you're just kind of throwing in the towel and just say, well, it, it ain't going to happen, evidently, God. Listen, his name is called Faithful and True. He who promised is faithful. In Romans chapter 4, God gave Abraham a promise that he was going to have a son through his wife, Sarah, who was barren. And he gave him that promise when he was in his early 70s. And the sun didn't come, and the sun didn't come, and the sun didn't come, and the sun didn't come. And it, the Scripture says, yet with respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, knowing that what God has promised, he was able to perform. And God did perform it. And when he was 100 years old and his barren wife was 90, she gave birth to a son and named him Isaac. God is faithful. God is faithful. So don't give up on your word, on your promise, on your dream from the Lord. Second, foundational truth that we need to know and have deep down in our hearts, not only is God faithful, but God is purposeful. He's purposeful. God is a God who works in our lives. He's not haphazard. He's not willy-nilly. He's not uh, asleep at the switch. God, you never hear in heaven the word, oops, Right? God never says that. God knows everything that's happening. And God, as we have shared in this series, never allows anything to come into your life or my life until he lets it first filter through his fingers of love. Now, here's the thing. When you hit detours, you don't really understand why you're having this happen to you. You know, there's an old saying that says you can't see, sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. When you're right in the thick of all the trees, all you see are trees, and you can't get a 30,000-foot a, 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 a view, view of the real situation. But God sees the real situation. And so God just says to you and to me, hey, you just need to know I'm a purposeful God, and I'm at work here, and so you just trust me. Just trust me. And that's what Joseph did time and time again. He just chose to trust God. Now, if you want to boil the Christian life down to just a sentence, here could be your sentence. God wants us to delight ourselves in Him. Just to delight ourselves in Him, to find our fulfillment in Him. Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. The word delight means to make yourself soft and pliable. It's a picture of the master potter with the clay. And the clay has one job in the hands of the potter. Be soft. Be pliable. Let the master move you in whatever place in whatever direction he wants you to go. Don't be stiff-necked. Don't fight the potter. Don't say, no, I don't want to go in that direction. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, verse 1, a man who hardens his neck after much reproof will suddenly be broken, and that without remedy. You know, if the, if the master potter is saying, now I'm going to make you this way, and I'm going to move you in this direction, and you fight him on it, he's having to move and, and work and work, and you're going the wrong direction, <clears throat> finally... 
You're going to be broken and that without remedy. So you want to just say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Darlene Dibler is one of my favorite Christians. She was a missionary in Indonesia during the years uh, before World War II. She was doing great work there along with her husband, Russell. But then World War II broke out, out, and the Japanese came and took over her island where she was working. And they separated the men from the women, and they put Darlene in the women's camp, and they were doing all this work for the Japanese, and they took her husband and the other men, and they took them up into the mountains. And Darlene said one day they had been separated for about a year, and she hadn't gotten much information from her husband, just a couple of, of letters. And one day, uh, one of the ladies who was kind of overseeing uh, all the camps, she came and she talked to Darlene, and her name was Mrs. Yaustra, and she began to uh, talk to Darlene, and Darlene was talking about the work and what they were doing. And then Mr. Mrs. Yaustra kind of cut her off and said, Darlene, I didn't come to talk to you about the work. I came to talk to you about Russell. And she said, how is Russell? And she said, Mrs. Yowster's eyes began to fill up with tears. And Darlene said, is Russell gone? And she said, yes. He died about three months ago up in the camp in Pari Pari. And Darlene said, I felt like the Lord had forsaken me. And she said, in that hour of feeling forsaken, the Lord spoke to her and said, My child, did I not say to you, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you? And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame kindle upon you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And Darlene said these two words to God, All right. Lord. In the midst of her broken heart, she said, all right, Lord. She just chose to remain soft in the master's hands. She didn't understand. She said it was many, many years, about 25 years later, where she really understood what the situation was with Russell and why that had to happen the way it did. And, and she, could say, she could say, thank you, God. You do all things well. But at the time, it was difficult, so she just said, all right, Lord, all right, Lord. And maybe some of you are in a situation where you need to learn to say, all right, Lord. God is a purposeful God, and he works in situations to bring you the, to the point of brokenness so you'll confess your sin to him, so you'll repent of that sin, so that you can get yourself back as soft clay in the hands of the master so that he can mold and make you. God is a faithful God. He's a purposeful God. And lastly, God is a plentiful God. A plentiful God. You say, Jeff, what does that mean? It means that God is not the God of barely enough. He's the God of more than enough. He's the God of abundance. Ephesians 3.20, now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory. He's able to do far more than you can think or even imagine because that is God. Now, let me show you something that's really, really cool. God gave Joseph two dreams that his brothers were going to bow down to him. 22 years later, his brothers bowed down to him, and they bowed down to him five different times. Five times. It's not that they just bowed down once. If they bowed down once, that, that would have been enough. God fulfilled the dream. But God isn't the God of barely enough. He's the God of more than enough, and he gives exceeding abundantly and over and over and over and over again. God showed Joseph, I keep my promises. And here it is again, another reminder that I keep my promises. And you know how this story ends up? Joseph sends for his daddy, Jacob. And Jacob is told the great news that Joseph is still alive and he's the head guy in Egypt. And, and Jacob is like holding his heart like Fred Sanford. Uh, he's, he doesn't, uh, wow, he's still alive. He couldn't believe it. And then once he believed it, 
he was, couldn't wait to see his son Joseph. And it's such a beautiful picture. When Joseph meets his dad, they hug. And the scripture says that he wept on his father's neck for a long time. For a long time. And old man Jacob, 130 years old, he lived for 17 more years there in Egypt with Joseph taking care of him. But then at 147, he dies. And Joseph's brothers begin to talk, and they say, uh-oh, daddy's dead. And maybe he was the only reason Joseph was nice to us. And they say in Genesis chapter 15, 50, verse 15, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph should bear a grudge against us and pay us back in full for all the wrong which we did to him? So they sent a message to Joseph saying, and this is a lie, but they were expressing their hearts. Your father charged before he died, saying, thus you shall say to Joseph, please forgive I beg you the transgression of your brothers and their sins, for they did wrong, for they did you wrong. And now please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. They didn't believe Joseph. They didn't believe that he was genuinely forgiving them. Then his brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. For I am in God's, for am I in God's place? Am I the one that judges? No, God is the one that judges. And he said, and as for you, the summation of this story, and as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result to preserve many people alive. So therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. So he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Now Joseph stayed in Egypt, he and his father's household, and Joseph lived 110 years. Wow, how, how beautiful is that? God is the God of more than enough. And listen, folks, God takes the worst. He takes the absolute worst and turns it for the best for those who trust him, for those who learn to say, all right, Lord, for those who get honest about their sin and turn from their sin and confess their sins to the Lord and repent of those sins, God does a great work. Have you thrown in the towel on your dreams? It's always too early to quit. Some of you have thrown in the towel, and it's time to pick it back up and to trust God. My friend, I don't know what's going on in your life, but God does, and He wants to help. He wants to make a difference, and it all starts when you open the door of your heart to Him. Many watching know about God, but maybe you don't really know God in a real and personal way. If that's true, today is the day for you. Simply pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I need you. I know that I'm a sinner, and I'm lost, and I can't save myself. Jesus, I believe that you're God in the flesh. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead. And right now, Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart to you. I ask you to come into my life, forgive me of all my sins, change me, make me the person you want me to be. I surrender my all to you, and I promise to follow you all the days of my life. My friend, if you'll pray that kind of prayer and mean it, the Lord will come in and your life will never be the same. I'd love to hear from you, to know that you're watching, to know that God is using this broadcast to make a difference in your life, to know that you just prayed that prayer to receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Please take the time to call that toll-free number, write me, email me, let me know what's going on and how we can pray for you. You really are important to God, and you're important to us, and we're here for you. Today's message from Pastor Jeff Shreve, when Dreams Come True is from his timely series, Dreams and Detours, Lessons from the Life of Joseph. Find out how to get your copy when you call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org. Do you have a God-given dream, a vision or picture that God has put in your heart about your future and what He wants you to do in life? 
Hey, has that dream been detoured, especially in these last few months? Has that caused you to become bitter? Or are you learning to trust God even more? That's what Joseph did in the book of Genesis. He trusted God to fulfill his dream, no matter the setbacks. This month, I have three key resources that I believe can help you better navigate the detours that have interrupted your life and help you get safely through these storms. They include my series, Dreams and Detours, Lessons from the Life of Joseph. Secondly, my book, Life Interrupted, How to Face a New Normal. And then lastly, the new series, Storms, What to Do in Troubled Times. These are available for your generous support to From His Heart by June 30th. We're hoping to end our fiscal year on a strong note and reach our financial goal of 175,000 this month that will help us recover from both a fire that destroyed our offices back in March and the pandemic that shut our offices down. Will you help us with a gift this month? Remember, I take no income from this ministry. I'm a volunteer and a generous monthly supporter. That means that every dollar you give goes to reaching more people with the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks for your support. I greatly appreciate you. Dreams and Detours, Lessons from the Life of Joseph, and the book Life Interrupted, How to Face a New Normal are our gifts of thanks for your support of $30 or more this month. And for your gift of $60 or more, we'll also include the new series from Pastor Jeff entitled Storms, What to Do in Troubled Times. Call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org. Thanks for your support by June 30th to help us close out our fiscal year, able to impact more in 2020. From His Heart is the viewer-supported broadcast ministry of Dr. Jeff Shreve, who believes that no matter how badly you may have messed up in life, God still loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. Find out more about that plan. Go to fromhisheart.org. Real truth.